So uh, as I said, we are we are making Kichri. Okay. Uh, just to recap of the of what is the algorithm that we are using. Okay. Um, so this thing is called. Uh, so this uh, particular technique we are studying is called uh, K-means plus plus. Uh, this was a paper by uh, Arthur and uh, I can never spell Sergey's name. Vasily Vetsky, yes, 07, 2007. So again, I mean, I kind of find it surprising that, uh, uh, that uh, I mean, uh, such an algorithm that has been uh, well known for, for such a long time, uh, it took us until uh, 2007 to, to find these improvements uh, that have actually made it down to practice. So, okay, uh, so, 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 so what are we doing? Uh, I mean, the good thing about this algorithm is that we make minimal changes to the Lloyd's algorithm, right? And really, the only change that we make is kind of like the pain point of, the, uh, of Lloyd's algorithm, which is what the initialization. Beyond that, it's going to be exactly the same as Lloyd's algorithm. Okay? So, and uh, all it gives is a strategy for this initialization. And let's think about why this has, what is the intuition behind this, right? So some of you had uh, come up to me uh, asking about it, right? So what are we doing? As we said, that uh, we start with the we start with the first center. We choose that. Let let's say we choose that uniformly at random, right? And then for the second, when we go to our, selecting the second center, we take okay, take everybody's distance with respect to the first center. Okay. So let's say this gives me d of x1, d of x2, d of x3, and so on. And this is d of x4. Okay. So then. For the next center, so C2 becomes uh, xi with probability d of xi square divided by summation d of xi square. i equal to 1, 2, uh, however many number of points at this point, n minus 1. Right? So it's this. Okay? So, uh, so that's fairly easy. Right? It's possible to calculate this. By the way, do we know what? Uh, do, uh, do you guys know what this kind of uh, random variables are called? That if a particular random variable takes value, uh, let's say alpha one prob with probability p one, alpha two with probability p two, and alpha k with probability p k, what are these random variables called? Discrete, Discrete random variables. These are. This is a multinomial distribution. Right? Binomial distribution that takes only value zero one. Let's say. And he, here we are t saying that the random variable takes values one of the uh, one of k values, namely the value alpha with the corresponding probability pi. So we're defining its 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 density function using using these discrete uh, probability values. So this is a discrete a discrete random variable, definitely. More specifically, a multinomial distribution. Okay. So uh, so then this is how we choose ci, c2. So c2 will be one of these other points. Okay. So now let's imagine what is really going on. What is going on? So, 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 to, so to understand, and, and, and this is really a key trick, to understand such an algorithm, I find it easier, and this is really universal, that uh, you sort of think about very, very simple cases, right? And what really happens there? So imagine a dumb, simple case in which, let's say, we have, uh, we have uh, all the points. Let's say, let's say we have this room, right? I mean, this two-dimensional room. And uh, we have the floor, floor of it, and the points are kind of uniformly spread along here, right? So imagine the points. Somebody has very nicely sort of taken time and put points uniformly on every, I mean, on the sphere, such that basically in any region of this of this plane, there's, I mean, uh, the number of points is proportional to the area of that region. Okay, what happens there after you select the first point? What is likely to be selected as the second point? Closer points, farther points? Hmm? Closer points? Will closer points be selected or will farther points be selected? Hmm? So there's a trade off, right? The interesting thing is that let's look at this trade off. Uh, let's, let's say that. Let's say that this is the first center. And we are saying that the points are uniformly sort of uh, spread out in this. Right? 
So that means that the next center, so, so imagine that this is the radius r, right? So, and imagine that this is a very thin circle around the radius, okay? So now, because this is a thin circle around the radius, maybe this radius, the annulus is of size delta r, but delta r is much, much smaller than r, right? So then all the points in this, in this, in this region are what? Are they, is, let's say, let's, let's consider this point and this point, p1 and p2. Is p1 more likely to be chosen or p2 more likely to be chosen? They are? They are they're equally likely to be chosen. They're equally likely to be chosen, right? Because see, the normalization is the same for everybody. Because it's a normalization. It's the sum of all the, all the dxs. How, and for p1 and p2, the numerator is basically the same. Right? Because it depends on the distance of, the, of p1 and p2 from the center. Right? So then, the number of points in this, uh, in this, at a distance r, kind of depends on, 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 on how many, uh, kind of depends on r, and how many points are there, how many points are there in this, uh, in this, in this annulus, right? So if the points are uniformly chosen, what is the radius of this annulus? Uh, what is the area of this annulus? It's kind of like the 2 pi r times delta r, right? It's the, it's the DDR of 2 pi r square, right? The, the, uh, I mean, we're taking the derivative, basically taking the derivative and uh, multiplying by 2 pi r. So that's the number of points in this annulus. Each of them has probability of being chosen that's proportional to, uh, um, I mean, uh, r square by, by this sum, by whatever sum, right? So then this you can say is the, is the, is the probability of a, of, a, of a point being chosen, uh, of the next point being chosen at distance, at distance r, right? So, 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 so this still kind of uh, increases with r, right? Because uh, this increases with r, this is increasing with r, so this, so this entire probability is, being, uh, is increasing with r, which means that the, the probability that the next point will be chosen at a, at a, at a, uh, at a larger distance is much, is much higher than the probability that it will be chosen at a smaller distance, right? We, uh, which kind of means that if the points are uniformly chosen, I mean, if the points lie uniformly on the grid, this behaves more like the farthest point, which is kind of like the right thing to do because the points are uniformly. So if you have, if you have created a center here, might as well create a cen center for way far off. Okay, so that makes sense. The other, the other way, the other kind of, uh, kind of uh, see, see, this is a very simple, simple sort of uh, case, but it's useful to get our intuition. Other case is something like this. That suppose we have a bunch of points that are very densely, in this region, there are a lot of points lying. And, and there are a small number of clusters here. I mean, small number of outliers here. Maybe there's a one or two outliers here, but then there are a lot of outliers in this. There's another bunch of points here. Okay? And now suppose you have chosen the first center to be at the center of this square, this first dominant region. Now what happens? Now you have to look at, now for the second center, now, uh, 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 now we're asking, okay, will it be chosen, is it more likely to be chosen from here? Is it more likely to be chosen from here? Right? So imagine that these two are the same distance, R, from the, from the original, from the first center. Where is the next point more likely to, co to come from? From this, from this blob or from this set of outliers? Hmm? From the so the first center is being the first center has been chosen here. Where is the next center likely to come from? From this blob or from this outliers? Where most of them are, I mean, imagine that they're both at distance r from the. I mean, let's say all these points are more or less at distance r from this. All these points are more or less at distance r from this. But the number of points here is much more than the number of points here. Number of points in this in this big circle is much more than the number of points here. In the circular region. Why is that? Because they're more dense here, therefore the total probability, while for every point here, the, the dx alpha by, by the normalization is the same as, the, as, the, as, the, as, the, uh, as another point here, dx alpha by the normalization. So for individual points, this probability is being chosen is the same, but there are just more points here. So therefore the total probability mass here 
is much more than the total probability mass for the outlier region. So therefore, the next point will likely be chosen from, from this, from the circular region, right? So, so, so you see that there is this tension of, okay, how many points are, are there at a, at a particular distance, right? And how far are they, right? And this is the right kind of tension to play upon. So alpha equal to zero, right, kind of looks at only one of them. Okay, it, it, it kind of looks at, okay, how many points are there? Because uniformly and random means that more points are out there, means that it's more likely. Alpha equal to infinity looks at the, only the other side of the tension. It looks at, okay, how far off? But this kind of combines the two sort of tension factors into, and this happens to be the right kind of combination, this, the, uh, this alpha equal to two, and the alpha equal to two is no magic. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a right kind of combination because we're looking at the distance squared. If we were looking at a, at a distance to the power one, this alpha would change. It would be, as you as your right guess, is probably one. Right? Uh, although I'm not entirely sure of that, so you should check that out in the experiments today. Uh, okay, so, so, then, so then this is really the intuition, that it kind of basically tries to say that, okay, I, I really want to get away from the current set of centers, right? But I don't want to choose, I mean, if there are one or two outliers, I don't want to be choosing them. I mean, if possible, right? So, so unless, unless, let's say that we have here, but then there are very small outliers that are very far here. Let's say that there are uh, that the very small outliers that are very far apart from the center, right? Then, the to then, then because this, this capital R is much more than the small r, if this capital R is much more than the small r, then the probability here is, is, is proportional to capital R to the power alpha divided by the normalization factor. So I'm writing Z as a normalization factor, which is the same for everything. And it's possible that this is much more than the, the total probability here, right? So unless if the, and, and this is reasonable, that if the outliers, even if they're small, if they happen to be really, really far apart, right? Then it makes sense to actually declare them as their own cluster. But if they're not so far apart and there are not so, my, so many of them, then I don't really want to do that. That's basically the intuition, okay? And we'll try to see how to, I mean, how have they formalized this? Questions? Any questions? No? Okay. So, so, so what is the benefit? Okay. So, and here is a clear benefit. I'm writing this as a theorem, then we'll explain what it means. The algorithm returns a log k approximation. Remember what is k? k is the number of clusters. So what does it mean that it returns a log k approximation? You might not have studied an approximation algorithm before. I have thrown a lot of things at you. This is a randomized algorithm. This is an approximation algorithm. So what is an approximation algorithm? An approximation algorithm is that, that suppose you have, a, you have an objective function, right? And uh, the objective function, you optimize, and, the, and suppose the optimum value is opt. Right, and you want to get, and suppose you're, you're trying to sort of uh, minimize this. Okay, so, uh, so then if you cannot minimize it, then suppose you can get to, you have an algorithm that can give you a, uh, that can give you a solution that's within opt over two. But the cost of the solution, the cost of the, of the algorithm, right? Oh, sorry, I should, uh, I should really talk about minimization. So let me raise, all ink on the slide. So, so you have a you have a you have objective function that you are minimizing, and the optimum solution is opt. Now, suppose somebody tells you that okay, I'm not able to completely minimize it, but I'm giving you a solution that I call the algorithm, and the cost of this algorithm is less than twice opt. Right? Let's say you really wanted to, uh, you really wanted to be, uh, I mean, uh, to get, uh, I'll give you a machine learning example. You really wanted 99% uh, accuracy, you get like 60% accuracy, right? So, so, this, so this is, this is, this is the, this is the opti which is the, which is the objective function, right? optimal objective function. So, so we call this a two approximation. So what it means is that, okay, I cannot give you the, I cannot guarantee that I'm giving you the, the, I mean, the optimal solution, but I can give you which is not much worse than optimal. And this is less than or equal to two because we are doing minimization, right? If it was doing maximization, then it would have been the other way around. Okay, so, uh, 
for this algorithm, then what are we saying? We are saying that the, the cost of this, of this, of this k-means plus plus, and remember, the definition, what is the definition of cost? The, the definition of cost remains the same, which is the k-means objective, right? Which means that the objective function of this algorithm will be at most, to, uh, sorry, some constant times the log k of the cost of the optimal solution, right? which is quite astounding, right? Because, because previously, remember what happened in previous Lloyd. In previous Lloyd, we saw examples, right? Where we could get to solutions that are arbitrary, were, uh, that could be much, much worse with respect to optimal, right? Remember the, remember this, this particular, this particular example that we saw, that. Uh, this particular example that we saw, right? If this, if this distance, right, is, is much smaller with respect to this distance, then the, op then the solution that we get is way, way, way worse than the optimal, right? So we have, so, uh, and, and we completely sort of go around that, right? We completely sort of go around that and say that, okay, give me, this is, this is like a worst case example, well, I mean, worst case guarantee, which says that give me any input, doesn't matter. Think of, I mean, think as hard as you can, give me any input. Right, I'll guarantee that using the k-means algorithm, right, I don't return you a much a sort of solution that is much worse with respect to optimal, right? And uh, you might say that okay, log k, what is that? I mean, what are the typical values of k that you k that you take, right? We'll do. We'll today we'll deal with uh, MNIST data set which deals with k equal to ten. K equal to ten log k is very very reasonable. However, in certain settings, you might be dealing with k equal to thousand. E, what is log k? Who knows? This is probably log 2. So 2 to the power 10 is like 1,000. So log k is about 10. 10 approximation. Starts getting a little iffy. What happens if k equal to 1 million? If you have a million clusters? You typically don't have a million clusters. But even if you do, it's, it's, it's a, this is a theory bound. Well, what you will see today in the experiments itself is that uh, you get actual guarantees that is way, way, way better than this log k approximation, right? In fact, you get uh, guarantees that is, that is uh, very, very comparable to, to anything that you, any algorithm. So, so, how do we, so, how do, so how do we capture that? We capture that by saying, uh, 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 with, this kind of, uh, with this kind of guarantees, right? What this guarantee says is that, that suppose the data happens to be nicely clusterable. So I'll, I'll, I'll sort of define what it means, right? Intuitively, what it means is that, that there are, that there are, uh, uh, that the data is such that, that the data is not like this. See, if the data is, is like, is like, is like something like this. The straight, uh, I mean, all the, all points on the straight line, basically all points on this continuum. Then there is no real cluster structure present, right? Because if you take two, if you take a single cluster here, versus if you take three clusters here, versus if you take five clusters here, I mean, it's not really just clusterable. However, look at this data. There is clearly two nice clusters possible, right? So, so I don't know how to capture that formally, but suppose this is the intuition, that if the data happens to be nicely clusterable, right, then in fact, your, your, your k-means algorithm doesn't just return a log k approximation, it returns a constant factor approximation. This O1 is a constant. It means that this is, let's say this constant is like, is like three, that, that your solution is never a factor three worse than that of optimal. This is what it means. Is this clear? Any questions here? Is the concept of a approximation clear? Right? That the cost of your, the, the k-means cost of the solution that we are going to return is never going to be much worse than that of the optimal cost. So think of it this way, right? Even if you don't understand all the... The, the value, see, see, that's the point. I, I mean, I don't care what the value of the cost is. What we are saying is that for this point set, whatever be the value of the... Okay, so first of all, you know what the objective function. So what is this cost function? This cost function is the k-means objective function, right? Which, I mean, I should just write it down, actually. Uh, let me just write it down. Hmm. So this is the summation over all x, mean over cx, t of x, cx square. This is the this is the cost that we are talking about, right? And I don't care what the value of this cost is. That's the point. The algorithm doesn't know the or the optimal value of the cost. However, it is guaranteeing you, right, that run this algorithm, whatever be the optimal solution, what and the and, and the corresponding cost for that, you're not going to be too far off from there. 
Oh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a specific constant. I don't remember what the constant is. Yeah, yeah. But again, but again, the point is that these are, I mean, you should look at it from the, from the point of view of not just the constants, but what is it really trying to say? Right? Because the actual constant, so the, so the objection was that, that, okay, order one, it can be a million. Right? One million is order one, right? And does that mean anything? Likely not for the, I mean, for this, for the realistic data sets. But if you think about it, that, that what do these uh, theorems mean? They really are talking about that if you let n go to, does this depend on n? Does, it de does this depend on k? Right? And the actual constant that you put here is likely a function of the analysis you're able to do. Okay? And in practice, you get results that are much, much better than the constant that you derive in the proof. Let's just put it that way. Okay? And I don't remember what the constant derived in the proof is, but uh, I mean, we can re we look at the theory, I mean, practical results in, the, in, in this. In, uh, yeah. And uh, so that's, that's, does that answer your question? Hmm. No, 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 no. So, so that's, a, that's again a very good point to, to sort of interrupt upon. So, so these two theorems are saying two different things. The first theorem is saying is that it doesn't matter how the point set is, right? This algorithm always returns you. So both of these are worst case. I mean, I mean uh, not exactly, no. I mean, let me recorrect it. Uh, okay, so let me rephrase it. So reset to a few seconds. Okay. Uh, the, what the first theorem is saying is that look at the worst case input. Okay, so somebody looks at the algorithm, designs the input for it. You are still going to get a lock approximation. That is the worst case. The other theorem is saying is that, okay, the algorithm, I mean, nobody is really designing a worst case input. It, it may not be best case, but it's not worst case either. It's like that this, that this, that this particular input that we're ge getting has a nice cluster structure with k clusters. In that case, we get a constant factor approximation. Okay. Any other questions here? Okay. Okay. So, 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 so let's look at a more precise definition of what is nicely clusterable. Okay. So, here is what we say. That suppose we call we call an algorithm, we call an algorithm with a nicely clusterable, with the I mean we call a data set to be nicely clusterable with the parameters uh, k and epsilon. So think of k as the as a number k and epsilon as something like I don't know 0.1, right? If the following happens, right? That so imagine this this point set. There are a bunch of points here. Then there are a bunch of points here. So in this particular point set, in the in the squares and the and the crosses, there is really a difference between the the I mean using one cluster and using two clusters. Would you agree that if, if you, I mean, if you use one cluster, right, then you cannot get the, you cannot get it to be, you cannot get the objective function to be really low. Whereas if you use two clusters, the objective function suddenly drops. So there is a right number of clusters present, so to say, right? And that's exactly what the definition sort of says. What it says is that, that there is a small constant epsilon such that using k clusters is much, much smaller than using, the cost of using k clusters is much, much smaller than the cost of using k minus 1 clusters. So think of k equal to 2 here. So the cost of using two clusters here is potentially much, much smaller than the cost of using one cluster. This is when we call the, uh, call the data set to be nicely clusterable. Right? I'm just throwing you this definition. Okay? And, and uh, under such circumstances, we can say that uh, k-means gives really shines. It sort of gives you a, a very, very sort of a good approximation, right? But even otherwise, even otherwise, even if somebody is designing the data set to be adversely worse with respect to you, it doesn't do as it doesn't do very badly. Epsilon, so epsilon is some some small constant, right? That's used in the parameter. So think of it as, as some small constant less than one. This is more a technical definition. So, I mean, that's because this is also squared. Remember, this is also squared. This is the, uh, so the distances have been squared in both of them. I think it's more in line to sort of keep the units to be the same. This is, this is epsilon squared, basically. There's no, there's no particular reason that this is, I mean, I could have defined it with epsilon also. There's no particular reason. Yeah. Okay. Is it clear? Sort of, okay. Okay. So, so, so why does it, why does it work? 
And this is what, and this is what we have been talking about. And I'll try to frame it a little more, right? So, so, so here is the first thing that we say. Here is the first thing that they that they prove, right? And this, and we won't prove this, right? But, 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 but here is the intuition. So, so the intuition is something like this: that suppose the optimum clustering. So there is some optimum clustering, right? Which is that suppose God had told us that look, this clustering is really the optimum of the k-means objective function. Okay. So now, now imagine what uh, uh, what is happening uh, to the what is happening to the to, uh, to the k-means plus plus. So what we claim is that if the if the first point is chosen from some cluster of the optimum. Right? The, the, the first point is chosen from some cluster of the optimum. And what we claim is that, that this cluster, right, that the, the, that the total cost of this cluster is approximated pretty well, because I've already placed a point in the first cluster. Right? This is not very hard to show. So the, I mean, is, I mean uh, it really uses triangle inequality. It's a form of triangle inequality. Because, uh, because optimum plays some, some point here, and it's sort of maybe somewhere here. So therefore, the distance of any point to the optimum center is, uh, can be said that it's, it's kind of not very far uh, of the distance of this point to, the, to my center and the distance of the center to the optimum. So that's not, that's not, very, that's not very hard to show. So the, so the, so the, so any, so the first cluster that I, that, the, that my k-means plus plus chooses a point from, that is approximated fa fairly well, right? Then the second cluster, then now onwards, we kind of do a, it's an it's a, it's a induction, right? And it kind of sort of uh, uh, has the same kind of intuition. What it says is that, that suppose there is some cluster of the optimum in which that, such that k-means plus plus is choosing multiple points from there, right? So why is it choosing multiple points from there? And this, so even if you sort of don't understand this completely, it's okay, because this is really dense. I mean, and, 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 and I'm really kind of giving you a very overview sketch of this proof, right? What it says is that, okay, why is k-means plus plus choosing m multiple points from this cluster? So remember that the, the, the k-means plus plus objective is the summation dx square, dx square by summation dx. So the k-means plus plus sampling probability is this. So if it is choosing multiple points from, from, from the same optimum cluster, it kind of means that the total probability of choice from, from this cluster is fairly large, right? Because if I, if I sort of, uh, let's say I'm choosing points, uh, I mean students either from here or from here, and if I, uh, I mean, if I happen to be choosing uh, multiple students on this side, which kind of means that I prefer this side more, right? That's exactly what it says. That, that the, uh, that, uh, I mean, if it chooses multiple points on the cluster, which means that the total sum of the numerator is more or less comparable to the total denominator, because the total probability on this, on this cluster is more. And this kind of says that the other clusters don't contribute too much, basically. And then, and, 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 and then we can focus on this, on, on, on sort of trying to approximate the optimum cost on this cluster itself. This is basically, I mean, it's a very vague, vague intuition. This is nowhere. But uh, if I try to explain it, that would take up the rest of my, my two hours. OK. So, but, uh, so combining these intuitions, what you can say that, uh, what you can say that uh, you, you, get, you get something like a log k approximation for the, very worst, for, the, for the very worst case input design. However, if the data is already well separated, then the second case doesn't even arise, right? Then what we always get is kind of like the first case, right? If the data is very well separated, that there are k clusters that are, that are very far away from each other, that the data is nicely clusterable, then the, then the, then the, then the k-means plus plus algorithm kind of always happens to choose one point from each of the optimum clusters. And therefore, it approximates optimum clustering fairly well. This is the intuition you, uh, you can take away. That the k means plus plus uh, sampling probability is designed so that it, it sort of places a cluster, uh, places a clustering, places a cluster center wherever the optimum tries to place a cluster center in some sense. Huh? You have a question. How does it choose these starting points? Uh, so as I said, that the starting point is chosen uniformly at random. At random. Uniformly at random from all the points. And, okay? 
and then and then onwards you do this, right? But then what you have to say is that I mean, uh, and, and I kind of uh, skipped over this. What you say is that this algorithm works with high probability, right? And the way you say this is that okay, I'll run this algorithm ten times, right? I'll run the entire k-means plus plus initialization plus k-means ten times, right? And then I look at the objective function for each of these 10. I'll take the minimum of these 10 runs. So if I had, uh, let's say, uh, OK, let me see. If I had a, a, a chance half right, of this k-means plus plus working, working in quotes in one of these 10, in one of these 10 cases, then if I take the minimum, right, then what is the chance that the k-means plus plus actually has worked in at least one of these 10 cases. I mean, okay, let me make my question a little more precise. Because you guys have done probability. So, so, so if the probability that uh, k means plus plus gives, uh, let's say, a uh, order one approximation is at least half. So what is this probability over? Remember, this probability is over the choice of centers, right? Because the choice of initialization. Because the random variable here are the other are the set of centers that we are choosing. So, so suppose, that the, uh, uh, suppose that the probability that the k means plus plus gives order one approximation is at least half. Suppose now, what I do is that you run k means plus plus 10 times with 10 choices of centers and take one with minimum objective function, right? Then can I say that what is the probability that this minimum of the runs gives order one approximation? What is this probability? Simple probability calculation. Yes. 